Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Voices from the Attic. Now today we're going to be diving into a very notorious spooky, spooky hotel. You've seen the title, it is the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. There is so much history that goes with this hotel and so much unfortunate history that goes with this hotel. Now before I do begin, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We just hit 1k, let's try to get 1,500. I'm being very optimistic, but let's try. And just so you know, this podcast and video podcast goes out every single Tuesday. So if you haven't seen the previous ones, there are going to be in a playlist. So let's begin the Cecil Hotel. Now, there is a few cases of death here and a few cases of murder. Let me grab my notes as always, and we can start diving in. Now, the hotel originally was actually made in 1924 by William Banks Hanna or Hanna, Hanna, and it was actually um, made with about, uh, created with one million dollars, and it had 700 rooms, it still does have 700 rooms, but this is how it started, so it was made in 1924. Um, It also had some very, when I look at pictures of the Cecil Hotel, it looks like a ship, (laughs) I know that sounds really strange, but it looks like the Titanic. It looks like you're walking into the Titanic. It's got like marble floors and it's got like stained glass windows and stuff. And it's got palm trees and it's just a very, very extravagant hotel. So what happened is it was opened. It was fresh. It was beautiful. But then Hannah, Hannah, I'm going to say Hannah, Hannah would come into some trouble with investment. Now, just two years after the hotel opened, it was then the world was then thrown into a great depression and people aren't going to spend that kind of money to stay in a hotel that's very, very, very fancy. And the majority of Los Angeles was actually collapsing at this time because, you know, economic crash, nothing's open. So then the area that was actually surrounding the hotel was then called Skid Row and it became, the area around it became a a home to thousands of homeless people because no one had any money, no one had nowhere to go. So they kind of were all situated around the hotel. So then what happened after this, all the rooms, they were once very, very beautiful. And then the once beautiful hotel soon gained a reputation as a meeting place for junkies. Oh! I thought around the area. No, not around the area. The hotel itself became a meeting place for junkies, runaways, criminals and homeless people. Oh, ho, makes sense now. Makes more sense. Um, So this started to happen. So everything was becoming tarnished in the hotel. Obviously, it was it was being very, very run down. So instead of, you know, the marble floors were then dirty, stained, all that and stuff. Now, this is not where the death and the horrors begin. Now, let's talk about where the horrors begin. It is known as the most haunted hotel in Los Angeles. And also, I forgot to mention, Los Angeles is a very, very dark place, and there's episodes I've already got pre-planned and scripts already written about some of the dark things that happen, um, which will be more kind of conspiracy episodes and stuff, whereas... uh, not conspiracies because there's quite a lot of evidence. I wouldn't say conspiracy really, oh, not really actually happening. Anyway, so the haunting of the Los Angeles Cecil Hotel. In the 1930s alone, it was home to at least six reported suicides. A few residents ingested poison while others shot themselves, slit their own throats, or jumped out their bedroom windows. I believe that it became such a common thing that they started to bolt the windows down so people didn't jump out of them because it was very, very common. And then in 1934, for example, Army Sergeant Louis de Borden slashed his throat with a razor. Less than four years later, Roy Thompson on the Marine Corps jumped from the top of the Cecil Hotel and was found on the skylight of a neighbouring building, which is just really, really grisly, actually. In September 1944, a 19-year-old Dorothy Jean Parcell awoke in the middle of the night with stomach pains while she was staying at the Cecil with Ben Levine, 38. She went to the bathroom so she wouldn't disturb her husband or partner 
and to complete shock, she had given birth to a baby boy. She had no idea she was pregnant, and it just so, as well as having some deaths and stuff, it's also had birth. So it is, it is, it is both, I suppose. So, anywho. Mistakenly thinking, oh my god, I completely forgot this bit. No, um, okay, so there is the happy bit, but then it gets really, really dark. So she's run over to the bathroom. She's like, oh my god. Starts having those cramps, having those pains, and then out wow, pops the baby. Mistakenly thinking her newborn was dead. I don't know why she would think that, but she, she, she thought her newborn was dead. She decided to throw her live baby out the window and onto the roof of the building next door. Because that is what sane people do. Oh, I don't need this problem in my life. I'm just going to get rid of it. Gone. How is someone not going to find a baby? She was found not... <gasps> She was found not guilty of murder because of reason of insanity and she was admitted to a hospital for psychiatric treatment. That's a shame. In 1962, so already we can kind of gather that there is an energy around the, the building that is very, very dark in its, in its essence. Very, very dark. Well, we're going to dive more into that because there is a lot of stuff that's happened in the same building to the point that I believe a Cecil Hotel is now being rebranded entirely and completely worked on because of the reputation that it has held. You'll get it more once I go down into these. So then, so we went from... Where do we go from? From 1944, we have now dived down to 1962. There was a 65-year-old George Ginani was walking by the Cecil with his hands in his pockets when he sh was struck dead by a falling woman. Pauline Ottman, 27, jumped from the ninth floor after an argument with her estranged husband and her fall killed both of them. That is just very, very rude. You don't, you don't fall on people. That's not good. Unless it's dirty dancing and that didn't fall, but you don't, you don't just fall on people. No. No, think of others before falling on them. Police initially thought the two had committed suicide together, but reconsidered when they found Giovanni. Giovanni was still wearing shoes. If he had jumped, his shoes would have fallen off mid-flight. In light of the suicides, mishaps and murders... Angelo's promptly dubbed the Cecil the most haunted hotel in Los Angeles. So this is way before, this is way before the stuff, the big stuff really happens. Because this, this gets creepier. This has just been the beginning. We're only in the 1940s, I believe. All right, let's get into the serial killer paradise. While tragic calamities and suicide have contri contributed heavy to the hospital's hotels it's not a hospital body count the cecil hotel has also served as a temporary home for some of the most creepiest murderers in american history in the mid 1980s richard ramirez ramirez murderer of 13 people and better known as the night stalker i think there's a there's a series on netflix right now called the night stalker it's on my watch list um he lived in a room on the top floor of a hotel during much of his horrific killing spree I didn't know. This has always been a really interesting question I have for all of you watching in the comments or anybody can tell me. It's, can you can you actually buy hotel rooms and just stay there? I've always thought that was strange. I don't know why. It's just a hotel was like a come and go place. I don't know. Anyway, so he would be on the top floor and then the mid uh, 80s, he would go on his rampage and then just, I suppose, clean up. Oh, he says it right here in my notes. After killing someone, he would throw his bloody clothes into the Cecil's dumpster and sank to into the lobby either completely naked or only with his underwear. I think someone would notice that. None of which would have raised eyebrows in the situation. Since the Cecil in its 1980s was completely complete and utter chaos, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't even care about a guy running around naked. It would just be every day, I suppose. At the time, he was able to stay there for a mere $14 a night. That is super duper cheap. And with corpses of junkies reportedly often found in alleyways near the hotel and sometimes even the hallways, the blood-soaked lifestyle... I mean, it's the perfect cover-up for him. There's loads of deaths happening around him, so he can just, like... It was just one of those. It wasn't me. Don't worry about the clothes. They're fine. So he... Oh, that's just nasty. Right, so we have... 
the Night Stalker, we have a few deaths now and suicides. We have a lady falling on another man and killing both of them in the situation. And then we are going to zoom in time here. We're going to go to 1991, the Austrian serial killer Jack until Vega, who strangled prostitutes with their own bras. What? Oh, that's not cool. I mean, like, bras have wires in them, so that's, like, horrific. That's not nice. Also called the Hotel Home. Rumour has it that he chose the hotel because of its connection. So he was kind of a... He was inspired by the other killer. Great. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Because the area around the hotel was popular with prostitutes, junkies, druggies. It was like a... It was like he was in a fish tank and he was a shark and there was thousands of fish around him and he just chose his pick. So he would just kind of grab them. They would vanish. No one would really know about them because a lot of people wouldn't know who were prostitutes at that time and they would just go missing in a sense and never be seen again. So, serial killers, copycat serial killers, suicides... Uh, mm, uh, falling sides as well those that happened and then we have some eerie cold cases that also happened at the Cecil Hotel as well this place is just horrific um while some episodes of violence in and around the Cecil Hotel are known for you know the serial killers doing what the serial killers do to pick a many one oh so we have these serial killers that did their cases but then we have people around the area would start going missing around this hotel a lot. Like they would go in there and then never come out and so forth. Or there would be like, um, there's one woman in particular known as Goldie Osgood and she was found dead in her ransacked room at the Cecil. She had been raped before suffering a fatal stabbing and beating, though one suspect was found walking with bloodstained clothing nearby. He was later cleared and never convicted because they were like, hey, this just happens, it's Hollywood, baby. I suppose that's what they do. And then we have another grisly, grisly tale um, of the noteworthy guest of the hotel was Elizabeth Short, who came to be known as the Black Dahlia. Got it right. After her 1947 murder in Los Angeles. She supposedly stayed in the hotel before her mutation, which remains, you know, unsolved. What connection her death may have had to the Cecil is not known, but she was... Like, once again, she was there, she died, and she was found on a street not far away in the morning with her mouth carved ear to ear and her body cut in two. I feel there is something wrong about... I know there's been a lot of um, the worst places in the world, but, I mean, this feels like it's just built on hell. It is just built on evil. That spot, not a good spot. Just choose another spot to build a hotel because this ain't the one. This ain't the one. This is really bad. So, now after this happened, a lot of the cases were that may have happened continued to be kind of erased or ignored because they didn't want to continuously have the, have the bad reputation of these things happening over and over again. So many cases that continued to happen there were kind of like, you know, put under on, on the rug. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just close that door. Close that door. Don't worry. Don't worry about the blood. Don't worry. It's just it's just ketchup on the floor. So we get to a few decades after Elizabeth. We then get the case, which is one of the most weirdest cases and kind of got me into doing this podcast today, is the case of Eliza Lamb. I've seen the footage over a hundred times. I've watched it again and again and again to try to work out what it is. So... Let's get to that case. This case happened in 2013, so it's it's kind of recent, pretty recent. So she was a Canadian student and she was found dead inside a water tank, I believe three weeks after she went missing. Now she was just staying there as any other person would stay there. And you see this video, like everything seems to be going fine. But you see this video and she's in this elevator and she's just kind of looking around, looking back and forwards and she looks quite nervous. And then she kind of like leaves the elevator and looks down the hall like she's kind of like waiting for somebody. And you're like, well, who? oh, maybe she's just waiting for someone. But then she kind of goes back on herself and her body language becomes very closed. She then starts hiding in a corner. She then leaves the elevator and then it looks like she's talking to someone because as I'm talking to you right now, you probably can't see this on the podcast, my hands are extending my body and I'm talking 
uh, as I'm saying my words, I'm a very talkative person with my words and my hands and stuff at the same time. It looked like she was doing that, but it looked like she was doing it to nobody because that's how it looked. There was no one else in the footage. Now, the footage, it wasn't given for a long time after her death, which makes a lot of people think that, although this is a true crime, there is some conspiracies here, that the footage had been edited because it looks like there is someone they didn't want to be in that footage that is actually, actually, uh, you know, maybe they're someone well known. Maybe they're one of the staff. They didn't want to get in trouble. So they edited them out. Maybe it was a manager. Maybe it was a, a higher up, but they didn't want them in the footage and stuff. So what happened is her body was horrifically found about a few weeks later and the only reason her body was found and bear in mind the last place we saw her is the elevator her body was found in the water tank at the top of the building and it is extraordinarily hard to get into that water tank and get to the top of the building her body was found in there naked with her clothes her clothes beside her body and there was no trauma applied to the body from what we know and she was just just in the water tank and people a few weeks later had said doesn't the water taste funny so people had been drinking this water and she had been in the water tank and that's just disgusting and the authorities ruled her death as an accidental drowning now this is where the conspiracies come in because it's just very very bizarre who was she talking to she was clearly talking to someone in this video in this footage of her in the lift, she was talking to somebody. She wouldn't have been able to get... The, she wouldn't have known where the water tank was at the top of the building. And from footage and Netflix uh, things that I've seen, it just it, it's a very difficult task for a lady like that. She's quite small. She's quite petite to climb up there and open the water tank and get in the water tank. And then we expect to believe she just kind of took her clothes off then and then laid in the water did she, did she think she was having a bath did she think she was going in one of those hypertherapy things where you you go in a tank of water you get a little bit cool and then you kind of see the universe i don't think that was the case here it really doesn't feel like the case um as i said they did capture the the footage it was very strange it seemed that she was ye like yelling at somebody her hands were extended and stuff like that and she was waving them erratically and even begging at some point. Now, after the footage did surface publicly, many people believed um, that the rumours of a hotel being taunted might be true. Maybe um, horrific... Uh, big I'm trying to think. Oh, oh. so people believe that there was kind of a connection between the, um, the black uh, Delia murder and the Lambs murder, pointing out that both women were in their 20s, travelling alone from LA to San Diego, last seen at the Cecil Hotel. They were missing for several days before their bodies were found. Um, it's just, it just feels like... It just, it's just horrific, really. And as I said, like in my notes, I didn't mention, yeah, it took a while to get the footage to the family and stuff like that. And it just seems like something was going on there a little bit more than just a ghostly adventure and uh, adventure, ghostly venture and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, since then, they have been, I swear they've rebranded. They're no longer called the Hotel Cecile. And the last body was found in at the hotel in 2015, a man who committed suicide and ghost stories and rumours of the haunting swirled once more. I know that Ghost Adventures have just released an episode on this, so if you're wanting to know more about it, it's on Ghost Adventures. They've just done an episode on the Cecil Hotel entirely, but there's even like even even more stuff to go into on here because they feel like a lot of politicians also went to this hotel and a lot of famous people went to this hotel that were well, were well known about. And I even remember reading something about a cult and I don't know where it is now and it's not in my notes, but I swear it's just, just don't ever stay there okay just don't go don't go there ever right it says here after a brief stint they changed the name to stay on main and then the hotel was closed and now it's undergoing an 100 million dollar renovation and it's going to be turned oh my god it's going to be turned into micro apartments imagine living there after everything that happened. No. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, this was Cecil Hotel. I hope you did enjoy it. It was a, a little bit spooky. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think about the Cecil Hotel. Do you think it's haunted? Do you think it has a dark past that has been following it around? Do you think it's cursed? What do you think it is? As always, let me know. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week on Voices from the Attic. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh my god.